Hi, my name is Maggie Stein. I'm going to show you today how to print a lino cut. This is the print that I'm uh, going to do today. First of all, my first step is uh, getting a little bit of Caligo ink onto the plate and spreading it evenly with my palette knife. Oh, I think I need a bit more. So probably about a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon of ink is enough for this size print. You then take your roller or as they say in America, your brayer and roll the ink evenly over the glass or perspex. Once you have an even coating of ink on the glass and the roller, then you can start transferring that onto the actual lino. If I roll in one direction and then another to ensure that you get that even coating that was on the glass onto the lino. You'll need to roll several times to get this. Once you think you've got enough ink on the lino, then just holding the roller at a slight angle and going along the edges of the lino ensures that those corners and sides get a really even coating because they're the, they're the bits that really will miss out if you're not applying your ink evenly. What we're going to do is print this lino by hand using a metal spoon and a baron. So I'm going to move it over to the registration paper, which I've previously prepared. Basically the registration paper is a piece of butcher's paper where I've marked the corners of the rice paper so I know where to put the rice paper down to ensure a nice clean edge. I've also marked the exact outline of the lino so that we'll all work out neatly aligned with the black corners on the registration paper and then when I'm sure I've done that I just let that paper drop down pressing the paper onto the lino. I immediately pick up my metal spoon and rub vigorously onto the back of the lino. In this way all the ink that was on the lino gets transferred onto the paper. This method of printing can be done at home on any little space you have. A kitchen table is what I used to use before I had my studio. Of course, the only thing you need to do is make sure you clean up really well because you don't want any toxic inks combined with food. So, as you can see, as I rub, the ink is coming through onto the back of the paper. You can also, you might want to use a baron. These are made from bamboo. They're the traditional Japanese uh, block ink. Uh, just, just made a mistake there. What I should say is, you might want to cut that. <laughs> this is a traditional um, tool that the Japanese use for printing, but I find uh, it's just not as firm as a metal spoon, so I prefer to use the metal spoon. The thing with the metal spoon is you can imagine uh, if you do rub vigorously, you might get lines coming through and it might not give a very even print. So what we're doing now is just having a peek. It still needs a fair bit more rubbing. So I'm going to press a bit harder and you have to try and imagine that you're pressing evenly over the whole print so you do get that really nice uh, totally dense cover. So I'm moving over to this side. You'll notice that my hand is on top of the lino so that it's really firm. You don't want to ever take your hand off the lino when you're doing this because you'll get a smudgy outline perhaps so the whole thing might move and ruin your print. Every piece of paper that I use is relatively expensive so I want to be careful with what I'm doing. Let's see how that's going. It's still not that even, there's a little bit up there but sometimes I use the end of the spoon just to
just to um, do the fine details. I don't think this print's going to work out to be as even as my other one. So, what you can do, uh, if you think you need to add a bit more ink to your print, what you can do is peel off part of the print and actually add more ink with the roller at this stage. So, I'm going to go over here and just carefully add a bit more ink to the lino. Obviously if you put some of, uh, if the roller touches the registration paper you end up with a black mark which will get transferred to your paper which won't look very good so you have to be really really careful doing that. Let's see if that's made a difference. Maybe we should just My thinking is the other side's going to be pretty similar. We'll just have a little look at the other side. Oh, that's not bad. You get up quite a sweat when you're doing this. Nice humid day in Sydney. I think it's about 24 and raining. to peel it off now. So there's a few little grainy marks but uh, that's a pretty successful print I think. Put it over on the dry, my makeshift drying rack which is just a bit of foam core wedged into one of my print drawers that, and that ink being oil-based takes about two or three days to dry. But the good thing about it is that it's a really lovely quality ink that uh, has great archival, archival attributes. And uh, I'm happy to do additions and prints with that. Okay, that's it.